He's quite poor. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Ian. We are a music and arts channel that covers anything to do with music and the arts. And this is a video about the thorny issue of price fixing by musical instrument manufacturers. What has brought this to a head is that large manufacturers have been fined for price fixing and another two turned up last week. Roland and Korg have been fined a total of £5.5 .5 million, uh, but this is just the latest in a long line of large instrument manufacturers to be fined. And just in case this is the first time that you've been here, um, I run a company called Sinners Music, which is a record label which for seven years ran a bricks and mortar musical instrument retail shop. We dealt with most of the companies over time and although we sold that part of the business in November 2019, we still continue to sell musical instruments online. And what I thought I would do is to give you a music retailer's perspective on this issue because we had to deal with this price fixing on a daily basis really while we ran the shop. The investigation started in April 2017 when the Competition and Markets Authority, otherwise known as CMA, started looking into suspected anti-competitive agreements and the inquiry seeked to discover whether attempts had been made to manipulate sales of musical instruments and pro audio equipment by price fixing or controlled sales to specific areas of the country. Now this, this originally came from the Sunday Telegraph. The five companies that were originally named were Yamaha, Roland, Korg, Casio and Fender. The initial investigation continued until autumn 2018. Dawn raids were conducted by staff from the CMA in May 2018. And while the raids were going on, a senior officer from Fender Europe concealed notebooks during the inspection of its UK offices in East Grinstead and for that alone Fender were fined £25,000. The first company to be hit by fines properly was the Japanese keyboard and piano manufacturer Casio who in August 2019 were fined £3.5 million. The way that price fixing worked was when a retailer agreed to sell a company's product the retailer had to agree to sell the product online at a minimum price set by the manufacturer. Otherwise, the retailer wouldn't be allowed to stock that particular product. In the case of Casio, this was maintained by the area representative and we would get infrequent calls from Casio telling us that the price on eBay or Amazon was too low and that we would need to adjust, basically forcing us into putting the price back up to the recommended retail price online. If a customer came into the shop or rang us, we would usually price match online prices irrespective of what the RIP was. Uh, there were exceptions to this, but I'll come on to that. In early January 2020, Fender were fined £4.5 million for, again, price fixing. They didn't appeal this. Now, we never dealt with Fender. Uh, I love the guitars and own a couple of them. But we'd heard stories from reps who would be coming into the shop of how Fender and Gibson for that matter would dictate to dealers how many guitars they would need to buy each month to keep the account. I hasten to add this is hearsay and I have no proof so allegedly this happened. Now that just didn't work with us um, so we never ever approached them for an account. So that leads us to the 1st of July 2020 when the Guardian ran a story that Roland were fined four million pounds and Cog 1.5 million pounds. Uh, we dealt with Roland from 2014 till mid 2016. I can't remember any phone calls asking us to adjust the price but I suspect they did happen but it was common practice at the time. We fell out with Roland because their representative falsely told a member of our staff when she tried to order some stock that the account was closed when it wasn't. So I closed the account with Roland and when I got back from a holiday I sold off all the stock. So we decided to sell the stock at trade price plus 10% just to get rid of it. So we were the cheapest pri prices for Roland and Boss products in the UK 
for a while, I think it took about three or four months to clear all the stock out. And within that time, we didn't take any calls from uh, Roland because as far as we were concerned, the account was closed. I am quite saddened by the Korg case because the guys at Korg uh, are a really good bunch. Uh, we've been to the head office uh, and spent time with them and maybe they were doing something wrong and they just got dragged in. I don't know. My only frustration with the way that some of their agencies were selected. So we had a Korg account and we could sell certain Vox uh, solid state amps on that account but not any of the original Valve AC30 type amps without basically investing a lot of money stocking AC30s and AC15s and all of that sort of stuff. But COG aren't alone in this. Quite a lot of manufacturers do this. We could sell Yamaha keyboards and the cheaper digital pianos, but not the more expensive £1,000 plus digital and acoustic pianos. And while we're talking about Yamaha, they were given immunity from prosecution because they brought the facts to the regulator's attention that Yamaha had colluded with GAC over an online pricing of its instrument. So Yamaha blew the whistle and informed on GAC. So if you don't know who GAC are, GAC are the Guitar, Amp and Keyboard Centre in Brighton in the UK and they have agreed to pay a fine of more than £250,000 which was increased by 15% when it continued to restrict prices after receiving warning letters from the CMA. But this is the first large retailer to be fined. But it isn't the first time that Yamaha, the stool pigeon, uh, have been investigated for price fixing in the UK. It happened back in 2006 when the Office of Fair Trading launched an investigation into allegations that Yamaha were discriminating against internet retailers. All sounds very similar, but I don't think anything happened with that investigation. There are some common themes which the Competition and Marketing Authority investigation has found, and they are one, that the existence of unlawful resale price maintenance in the music instrument sector over a sustained period of time. There is the risk of increased fines where senior management are found to have known that the conduct was unlawful and or advisory and warning letters from the CMA had been ignored. And that, you know, good old Yamaha, or not as the case may be, that you can get immunity if you're first to report anti-competitive behaviour to the CMA which is a little bit smelly, I have to say. In my experience, small shops like mine don't have any clout with large manufacturers. And if we didn't comply, we would have had the agencies removed. Some manufacturers even stopped us putting instruments on certain online websites like Amazon, eBay or Reverb. But it was okay to put the stock on my own website. Now it's worth mentioning that music retailers buy the stock up front. So we may get 30 days credit, but we basically buy the stock. So we've bought it, shouldn't we be able to do what we like with it? Well, apparently not. The price ring fencing between Yamaha and GAC doesn't surprise me. We've often thought that larger retailers get special deals with some manufacturers. The nearest large retailer to our little shop in East Yorkshire was Gear for Music, who were based over in York, one of Europe's largest musical instrument retailers. And we always had uh, a problem on price with Tascam and Zoom products, whereby uh, Gear for Music were selling the handheld recorders from these companies cheaper than we could buy them, so less than trade. We always asked distributors and manufacturers to offer us the same deals as the big boys. Uh, if we didn't take a deal or couldn't afford to take a deal, then well, that's up to us, but we, the, the deal should have been there. Both Zoom and Tascam always said to us that Gear for Music didn't get any special deals, but we didn't believe them. In fact, one of the occasions when we rang Zoom UK, who were the distribution company for Zoom in Japan, uh, we were told it was just tough that Gear for Music could sell uh, the products at less than trade, which didn't seem very professional to us. And I hasten to add that Zoom UK have since gone into administration. So I guess that's tough. I must also add that Zoom Japan, 
the parent company are still going strong making great products uh, and have nothing to do with Zoom the video conferencing app which is an American company. A lot of manufacturers that we have dealt with have been involved with price fixing in one way or another. One company who shall remain nameless but are not one of the companies fined with ringers most weeks to alter our prices of stock online. What I find odd is that the way that musical instrument manufacturers are so bothered by what or where a retailer sells the product that the retailer has paid for. It seems crazy to me that if a retailer buys a clag nut for a pound and decides to sell that clag nut for two pounds instead of the recommended retail price of three pounds, who cares? The clag nut manufacturer is still making their profit margin and the retailer selling the clag nut uh, at the reduced profit may have to sell more clag nuts over time to receive the same profit as the recommended retail price, but that's better for the customer, surely? So in the long term, Will this be better for the customer? Mm, well, maybe. Certainly, I think the £13.7 million fines from these companies will have to be passed on to the customer in higher prices. So don't expect massive discounts anytime soon. So tell me what you think about this subject in the comments down below. And thanks very much for watching. Uh, and if you like what I do, please consider subscribing or buying me a coffee by joining my Patreon family, uh, it helps to keep the channel going and starts for as little as a pound a month. So take care, thanks very much again uh, and I'll see you in another video. Thanks very much, bye bye.